Hey, it's Coach Reeves. I'm here today. We're going to go over review 4.3 to get you ready for the test. Okay, so let's get after it. They're going to ask you to rewrite an exponential form. To convert to exponential form, remember that your base will stay your base. You just change who you're paired with. So my base is 12, so my base will stay a base, but instead of being paired with this fraction of 1 over 44, we're going to pair it with the negative 2, and that equals 1 over 144. Simple enough. You guys do a great job in converting. Over here, we're going to ask you to convert it to log form. Your base still stays a base. So in this case, my base is 81, so we're going to write log base 81. We'll pair with the 9, and that equals 1 half. Again, you've done a great job anytime we've asked you to convert. Now we're asking you to expand the logarithm. Remember, when you expand the logarithm, you're going to write the word log more than once. So we're going to say log base 2, but this is an exponent, and we've asked you to move the exponent in front. So we're going to say 2 log base 2 of w. And this is right up against the radical, which means multiplication. So you're going to write plus sign because it's multiplication. And we're going to say log base 2 of u. But in this case, it's underneath the radical, underneath the square root. And it's a square root of 2. So we're going to say over 2. But then you have a multiplication symbol, which means you're going to add. We need another one. So we're going to say plus log base 2 of v. It is also underneath the radical, so it's also going to be over 2. That's how you would expand that expression. Okay? Let's check out condensing. All right, so when you condense, you're only going to write the phrase or the word log one time. So on this problem, we're going to write log base 7. The first thing we come to is b, so we're going to write b. The next thing we come to, that's times. That's going to be times. But it has, it has an exponent. And that 4 is the exponent for that c. So we're going to say times c to the 4th. And then we have what? We have a 3 in the denominator. So that means we're taking the cube root. So we're going to get the cube root of a. And that's how you would condense that log expression, okay? Now we're going to ask you to find the inverse. And when you find the inverse, we're going to ask you to switch places with the x and the y. So we're going to go x equals 8 log base 4, y plus 3. Now we need to get the log portion by itself, so we need to Move the 8, we're going to divide by 8. This is going to give me x over 8 equals log base 4, y plus 3. Now my log is by itself, I'm ready to convert this to an exponent. So my base will stay a base, but I will now be paired with the x over 8 equals y plus 3. The only thing left to do is to move the 3 to the other side. But please, when you move it, do not put it as an exponent. Keep it on the same level as everything else. So we're going to go minus 3, minus 3. We're going to get 4 to the x over 8 minus 3 equals y. Okay, there's your inverse. Here they're going to ask us to find the inverse of this exponential expression. So we're going to switch places with the x and the y. We're going to say that x equals 5 to the y plus 1 over 4. 
Now, to get this y, phi to the exponent of y by itself, we're going to have to move some things. I'm going to ask you to multiply times 4. This will cancel. That will give me 4x equals 5 to the y plus 1. You're going to move the 1 to the other side. We're going to go minus 1, minus 1. 4x minus 1 equals 5 to the power of y. Now we're ready to convert that to a log. And when we convert it, my base will stay a base. So this will be log base 5 paired with the 4x minus 1, and that will equal y. There's your inverse. Good. Okay. Keep moving. They're going to ask us to graph. We're going to find our vertical asymptote, we're going to find the domain and range, and we're going to sketch a graph. But the first thing we're going to do is find the vertical asymptote. We find the vertical asymptote by taking what's inside the parentheses and setting it equal to zero. So we're going to get a vertical asymptote, and we're going to say 2x plus 2 equals to zero. Minus 2, minus 2, 2x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1. That is my vertical asymptote. Okay, so we'll go graph it. We go over here to where x, excuse me, x is negative 1, and we'll draw our line. It's about as straight as I'm going to get. Okay, that's my vertical asymptote. But my vertical asymptote will go hand in hand with my domain, and I'll show you that in just a second. Okay? But what we're going to ask you to do is we're going to ask you to put the equation in your calculator and go control T and find some points that, that fit on the graph. And when you do that, it will look like this. We're going to pick some points. And we're going to get 1, negative 4, 3, negative 3.5, and we had 7, negative 3. So when we graph this, if you look at your table, there's a couple of points we saw. I saw one also that was at 0, negative 4.5, 1, negative 4. I saw that was at a 3, negative 3.5, and, and we have 7, negative 3. So we can connect the dots, do the best we can to connect those dots. And my graph will look similar to that. No, it's not pretty. It's not perfect. But what you have to understand is now we're going to find our domain. My blue graph will never touch my vertical asymptote. And since it does not make contact with my vertical asymptote, we will use a soft bracket. Okay? And we're going to approach negative 1. And then we're going to go to positive infinity. My range will always be the same, down to negative infinity, up to positive infinity. There we go. So remember, to find your vertical asymptote, set what is inside the parentheses equal to zero. And then your vertical asymptote will help you determine your domain. Okay? All right, let's keep moving. They're going to ask us to solve each equation. To solve this equation, we need to get the same base and then set up an equation with their exponents. In this case, we're going to use 3 as my base. 27 can be written as 3 to the third, but it has an exponent, so we're going to put it in parentheses, and my exponent is an n times... I have 9, but I'm going to write it as an exponent of 3 to the second power. It is in the denominator, and I can't leave it there, so I'm going to push it up to the numerator, and my exponent will change when it crosses the fraction bar, and this will now become 3 to the negative 2 power equals 
I have nine again. We're gonna write it as three to the second power. We're gonna write it as three to the second power, but we're gonna put it in parentheses because it also has an exponent of negative three n plus three. So we're getting close. Now we know that my base is three, but we need to clean up our exponents and then set up the equation. We are raising the power, and when you raise the power or go power to power, you multiply, and that will give me three n. When we multiply, we add our exponents. I don't need a plus sign, but I can write minus two equals we're raising the power again. We will need to distribute, and two times negative three n is a negative six n. Two times three is a positive six. We're gonna add six n to both sides. We're gonna get nine n. We're gonna add two to both sides. It's gonna equal eight. We will divide by nine and we will get an answer of n equals eight over nine. Okay? All right, next problem, they're gonna ask you to simplify this. Only positive exponents and no fractions in the denominator. First thing I wanna notice is x to the zero power, that's the number one, okay? All right, so we're gonna ask you to do this. I would say we're gonna push some stuff, oops, excuse me. Let's go back. Sorry. All right, let's take it one step at a time, see what we got here, okay? This is gonna be two at the top. I don't have anything to mess with it. It is a positive exponent. But look at my y's. I have y to the first, y to the second. That will give me y to the third power. I have x to the negative four. over, this negative four is gonna to go to this negative x and it's gonna to go to that two. That will end up being, okay, you're taking an even root or an even power, excuse me, so that's a negative times, negative times a negative times a negative, but this is actually gonna end up being x to the negative four and this will be y to the negative eight. Okay, now look what happens to your x's to the negative four. These match up, these will cancel. All you need to do now is push your y to the negative eight up and it becomes a positive eight. When you combine, you're gonna get two. y to the third, y to the eighth will give me y to the eleventh, okay? Let's keep going. No. All right, we're gonna solve this equation, okay? We need to get the log portion by itself, so we need to move some stuff. So we're gonna move the seven, we're gonna go plus seven, plus seven. I will get seven log base 12, negative five r, minus 10 equals negative seven. We're gonna divide by seven, divide by seven. I'm gonna get log base 12, negative five R minus 10 equals negative one. Now we're gonna convert this to an exponential form. And we're gonna say my base stays my base we're gonna raise it to the negative one equals negative five r minus 10. Now, I can't leave it like this. This is gonna get pushed to the denominator because it has a negative exponent. This will turn into one over 12 equals negative five r minus 10. I need to move my 10 to the other side. We're gonna go plus 10, plus 10. 
I have 1 over 12 plus 10 over 1 equals a negative 5r. I need to get a common denominator. I'm going to multiply the bottom times 12 and the top times 12. That will give me 12 at the bottom and 120 at the top. When I add them, I get 121 over 12 equals a negative 5r. Let's bring this up so you can see this better. So we're going to multiply times the reciprocal. We're going to multiply times a negative 1 over 5 times a negative 1 over 5. This will cancel. R will equal a negative 121. 5 times 12 is 60. That's a lot of steps. I don't think we're going to give you one quite that tough on the, on the test, though. Okay? All right, let's keep going. Last problem. Luckily, look at this. Log base 11, log base 11. When that happens, we can just set up an equation with the part that's inside the parentheses. So we can say 2p squared plus 5p equals negative 6 plus p squared. I'm going to move the p squared to the other side. We're going to go minus p squared, minus p squared. And we're also going to move the 6. We're going to go plus 6, plus 6. Everything is gone. So this 2p squared minus p is going to leave us with a p squared plus 5p plus 6 equals 0. We need to factor this, okay? So this is going to factor into two parentheses. This tells me that my signs are the same. They're both going to be pluses. We're going to break down the p squared as p times p, but I have a choice with the number 6. It is a positive 6, and it says we need to add to find my combination. I have 1 and 6. I have 2 and 3. You have to be careful with this. Since that is a positive 6, you need to add to find your combination. So when you add, 1 plus 6 is not 5. 2 plus 3 is 5. That's what you need to use. You need to use 2 and 3. When we solve it, we will get a negative 2 and a negative 3. We are not done. You have to check for extraneous solutions. And remember, we cannot take the log of a negative number because that will not, it will kill that answer. It will, it will just say, no, it won't work. Or we cannot take the log of zero. It will be undefined. So let's check and see if negative two and negative three will work. I'm going to put negative two here. What is negative two times negative two? Because we have to square it. Well, negative two times negative two is a positive four. What is a negative 6 and a positive 4? That's a negative 2. I cannot take the log of negative 2. This is a bad answer. It's gone. I have to eliminate that answer. Okay? So let's try this also. We're going to put in negative 3. So we're going to substitute in negative 3. Negative 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. Negative 6 plus 9 is 3. Yes, that works. We're going to do it over here. Negative 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 2 times 9 is 18. 5 times negative 3 is 50, a negative 15. And 18 minus 15 is 3. 3 equals 3. Yes, that is good. Negative 3 is a good answer. Don't eliminate answers just because they're negative. You need to substitute them in to see if it works, okay? So we've worked a lot of problems. There's a lot of different types of problems that you have on the review sheet. You need to work the review sheet, okay? We're gonna give you a key to the review sheet so you can check your answers to see if you're doing it right. But most of all, please work the review sheet to see if you have questions. We cannot help you if we don't know where you're getting stuck. All right, let us know. Email us or let us know in a Zoom. All right, good luck.